Welcome back to another one. It is mid-March right now, and our crappie up here in Wisconsin are still in the uh, wintering slash early, early pre-spawn phase. Uh, we got water temps in the low 40s. Uh, I was actually on the Mississippi River yesterday, and the water temps were in the mid-30s. So we still got pretty cold water right now. Um, so right now, finding these crappie, they're still gonna be in kind of near their wintering holes or right where you found them last fall. And I'm under a bridge because these crappie are stacked up on these bridge pilings. So I thought, why not set up with the bobber setup? I haven't used a bobber setup in a very long time, probably since last fall. So we got the rod and bobs. This is the three in one. It's got that spring. There's two different slots on the spring there. There's two different slots on that spring. This bottom slot is for a fixed bobber position, and this top one is for a slip bobber. And you can also, there's a hollowed out grommet, so you can, uh, you can run a line through the middle out of it if you want to run a slip bobber that way. Today I'm just gonna be using this bottom spring, but I don't have live minnows, because for whatever reason, the, both the bait shops that I normally go to, they're out. Um, usually doesn't happen up north. Usually pretty much everywhere always has minnows, um, but couldn't find any today. So the next best thing, we got some crappie nibbles. Same setup I'd use for a live minnow. This is the, uh, this is a number one Aberdeen hook by Zone Lock. And then I have a, it's a one eighth ounce split shot. And then I believe this is the one inch uh, three in one bobber. We hook it up a couple crappie nibble pieces to the hook here and uh, the main reason I'm using the bobber is last year I fished this and when you try to get right on top of these crappie, it's only about 15, 16 feet of water and it's fairly clear. So if you try to get right on top of these crappie, they're just gonna scatter. So I wanna stay at least 20, 30 feet off them, pitch to them and uh, the best way to suspend a bait away from the boat is with a bobber setup. So that's the game plan. I'm gonna show you on live scope how they're set up and uh, I'm gonna have to pitch upward into the current because this is a river system, even though, well, it's a reservoir. Pitch upward into the current and kind of let this bait drift right to them. I've already caught one on a, uh, on a lipless, so they're, they're, fairly, they're fairly aggressive. I was actually throwing the lipless for smallmouth and crappie came up and smacked it, so. Hopefully the bite's doing pretty good. All right, let's get set up and start casting. Crappie nibbles load it up onto that zone lock hook. Let's catch a crappie. All right, so there they are right there. They're all stacked up real tight to the bottom. So let's pitch this thing out there and, uh, yeah, they're, they're, wow, there's a ton of them down there. Holy smokes, they kind of spread out. They were tucked all into this pillar, but now they're spread out quite a bit. So I'm gonna pitch this thing over there and. I was actually fishing walleye on the Mississippi, so that's why I got more of a heavier gear set up. Let's go smaller. Let's try this guy. This is what I like about these three-in-one bobbers. Literally 10 seconds and you can switch it up if you got the wrong float size. There he is. I took it down that time. There we go. Not a big one, but I think he's gonna fry up. Put that guy quick on this little scale here. He's just under 10. He's gonna fry up real nice. Gotta load back up. There he is, got him that time. Oh, that's a dink. That is uh, not the crappie we wanted. Quite a bit smaller than what we want. There he is. That's a better one. That is a better one.
Come here, buddy. There's another eater. It's too bad the limit on this lake is only 10. But that's another eater. Two in the box. Pretty much just gotta pitch it right into the center of that piling. Probably don't even need the live scope, just for depth. And to show you guys how these fish are hitting. Close here, buddy. Oh, oh. That was a super soft bite. I think he's gonna be a little small though. Yeah, he's a little on the smaller side, I think. We'll check him. Pull out that bump board. Ooh. Camera cover almost went in the lake. That would have been good. Those aren't cheap. All right, let's check this guy. Yeah, he's a. That's an eight and a eight and a half, eight and a quarter, eight and a half. He's going back. See you, buddy. Now these fish are probably going to hold here until the water temps get probably closer to 50. Most of the time they're not going to go shallow, at least up north, until 50, 55 degrees. Oh, right there. There he is. It's not popping the bobber. They're just kind of sucking it down. That's a good one, though. That's another keeper. There we go. And they are fat. Fat, fat, fat. That's a good, gives a good fish right there. Those are the ones, those are the ones we're after. They're not monsters, but that is a healthy Wisconsin crappie right there. Oh, oh. The shoot, did I just miss him? I think I did, son of a gun. Look down for a second. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, soft bite, soft, soft bite. I, uh, he might go. He might be one for the box. He might be a little short though, we'll see. Got my crappie nibbles stacked up. I think this guy might be a little short. There's no size limit, it's just, oh no, he's, he's gonna go. I don't like keeping fish under nine. He was nine and a quarter. So he's going in the box. That's number four. Number four. There he is. Super soft tap, so. Uh, is this guy gonna go? Possibly. They're thick this time of year though, even these small ones. Got some meat on them, they're feeding up. Nope. Eight and three quarters. Only eight and three quarters, see you buddy. There he is. Got him that time. Doesn't feel very big though. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Oh yeah, he's going. Oh yeah. That guy is definitely going in the box. It may not be long, but they are there's some healthy crappie. And they're gonna fry up real good. There he is. Got him that time. Man, these, uh, these crappie are a little bit finicky now. Caught about four or five of them, and now they're starting to get picky. That's another good one for the live well, though. Cool thing about the, the live scope, it's interesting to see all these, there's different schools of fish, and you can definitely tell there's different size classes that stick together. And uh, 
these are the size class that we want. They're about, what's this guy? It's gonna be about nine and a half to 10, somewhere in there. Yeah. He's just under 10. But uh, these different size class of fish are kind of swimming through. Some are by these rocks behind me and some go deep by the pillars, but there seems to be a consistent school by these pillars and they're, they're bigger marks like this. So this is number five, I believe. Better count. One, two, three, four, five. Stop moving. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's number six. Four more, and uh, we're gonna call her a day and fry them up. Just wasn't paying attention. Ooh, that's a. This might be a decent one. It's an eater. That is a. Uh, that's another eater right there. Number seven. How much time? Oh, two and a half minutes. Let's see if we can flip back in there. Catch another one. Really kind of pushed off a little bit, so I better back off. Used to be able to get a little bit closer, but now they're they're really spread out between these two pillars and they're pushed back towards me a little bit. That guy actually hammered it. That thing went straight down. Most of these bites have been you can barely see that bobber kind of just slowly sink, but they won't take it all the way down, probably because it's not live minnows. Oh, here we go. Is that a... And I'm constantly having, having to move this thing. These, this little chop does help a little bit, but most of the time, I, oh shoot, and I missed them. I bet he took my, min, my nibbles. I don't know, I guess I still got two on there. Let's go with that. There he is. Wow, that's a soft bite. I lifted it up to kind of, well, because he's not that big. I don't know, he might He might go. I think he's gonna be another eight and a half inch fish though. If he's nine, he's going. Oh yeah, he's nine and a quarter. Nine and a quarter, almost nine and a half. Number eight. There he is. Ooh, good fighter too. Well, there's number 10. Yeah, apparently I forgot to click the record button on number nine, but uh, it's not like I've been on YouTube very long, has it? Where is this guy? I think it's gonna be nine. Yep. Just a shade over nine. That is number 10. Limited out. Well, got my limit. I'm gonna head home and fry those things up. That is the, hold on, hold on. This wind kicked up on me. Or rod and bobs. Spring bobber. And what's so cool about these three in ones, this is the one I started off with. You can tell it's, this one's a bigger. This is more of like your walleye bass stuff, which is why I had it on there. I was just going for walleye. Um, this guy is more your crappie style. And it's so nice to be able to just, if you need to switch it up, pop it off just like that. Your spring just locks in the slot and you're able to slide it up and down the line just like that. And then I'll link those below and I'll link the uh, split shot and Split shot and Aberdeen hook. Do not have live minnows. Make sure you got these. Make sure you got those in the boat. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. Fry those things up and uh, have myself a nice, I might film it, I don't know yet. I was kind of disappointed. I was, last night I was on the Mississippi River, pool three. I could see the walleye stacked up, live scope, side imaging, I could see them. The problem is I'm not used to fishing a system with that much current. I'm not an expert at fishing the Mississippi by any means. And uh, you gotta make sure that bait is 
presented in a very specific way for those walleye to bite. It's not like a lake where you can just cast at them. Uh, the presentation is very, very key on those river systems and how that bait swings through the current seam. So I was going to go out tomorrow, but not with the wind. The wind's going to be 25 plus. I don't know, I might come back here, catch more crappie. We'll see. If you got any comments or questions about the setup, ooh, the setup. Eight foot ACC, I forgot about this. Eight foot ACC, this is my go-to slip bobber rig. Typically, I'd honestly, I'd recommend going with a 2,000 size reel if you're gonna do a lot of casting with the rubber bobber stop. Let's see what we got with, this is the, I just had the yarn stop today. Let's see if we can focus on that. Yeah, this little yarn stop. That's great if you're pitching it out and if you're not, you know, if you're not really gonna do a whole lot of casting and you can get away with a smaller reel. This is a 1,000 size PC Fun Honor XT. But typically, if you're gonna do a ton of casting, go with a 2,000 size reel, use that rubber bobber stop. Oh. I'll link it below, the rubber bobber stops, and I'll link, I'll link these yarn ones below as well. So, appreciate you watching as always. If you've got any comments or questions, you can post them in the comments section down there below the video. Or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram We'll see you in the next video.